We know that great teaching is one of the most important factors in ensuring successful schools. How can our district ensure that it is attracting and retaining the best possible teaching talent? And how will you ensure that new teachers are successful? Well, right now we have a, we pay a teacher recruiter to go out and find teachers. Um, also, uh, we give incentives. We have all kinds of incentives for teachers. Teach, we pay a teaching incentive for teachers that teach in our hard to staff schools. Uh, there are other, other ways that we have to, to keep teachers in the schools. But one of the biggest things we could do to keep the teachers in school, the biggest argument and the biggest gripe that I have of anything is behavior. I very rarely ever, well, I have never had a teacher tell me they quit because of the pay, because they knew the pay going in. I very rarely hear that. I don't guess I've ever heard that. But I do about the behavior. Matter of fact, I heard a teacher tonight just tell me about some of the behavior of their students. That is the way you retain teachers, is get a handle on the behavior, get a handle on the discipline. You will be amazed at how much different the classroom will look. You can take, I guarantee you, you took just about 10% of the kids out of certain schools, you wouldn't have any problems. Tobin is sitting back there, and I know he's a principal, and he knows that's a fact. There's very few people that cause all the problems. And so if we could just get those people blamed in, the classroom would look a whole lot different than it does now. Um, also, the respect of the teachers. Right now, we have just let respect of the teachers go by the wayside. How that ever happened, I don't know. But it has to be an administrative decision. But these kids that don't respect their teachers and talk back to them and use foul language, and some schools we've just given up on even uh, curtailing foul language. And it's, out, it's just completely out of control. And that's another thing we need to superintend. But that's why I really like the fact that we had a retired Marine that wanted to be the superintendent of our schools. I was real excited about that because to me, I think he could have gotten a lot of things under control. And that's the kind of th person that we need at the helm, somebody that these young boys, and young girls too, some of the young girls are the worst, uh, 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 rein them in and make them res uh, show a little bit of respect for the people in charge of their schools. But uh, they, I think that teacher recruitment, we have teacher recruiters that we pay at the central office to go out and recruit teachers. Now, how we make sure that every teacher is successful, I don't have a clue. Uh, we offer them every uh, in, every opportunity to take the classes. Matter of fact, most teachers think we give them too much opportunity to go pull them out of their classrooms. Most of them would rather spend more time in their classroom than out of the classrooms as much as they're pulled out for, for teacher training. So, you know, some people were, weren't meant to be teachers. Maybe they don't want to be teachers. Maybe when they get in there, it wasn't what, what they thought it was going to be. Uh, but uh, also, some teachers are non-renewed, and, that, and sometimes that's a principal problem. Maybe a principal has a personality conflict with the teacher. We see that sometimes. Or maybe I think a lot of teachers have gone by the wayside, which is another thing. I think that even teachers now, when they're non-rehired, you can never work for Hamilton County again. I think if you're non-rehired one school, if another principal wants to take a chance on you, you should be able to do that. And that's one way I've been fighting for teachers for years to try to get. And the teachers union agrees, I guess, with that because it's part of our policy uh, that we need to change that. I agree, we need to uh, listen to teachers more, uh, give them what they ask for. A pair is supposed to be a huge asset to teachers. The teachers are coming in overwhelmed uh, with all their, everything they've got going on. A pair could come in and help them out tremendously. Uh, and then if the, if the pair pro worked out good, maybe we can hire the power pro, the pair pro. Uh, we need to try to uh, ask teachers if they're having problems what they are, try to help them, try to meet their needs. Bad teachers, we need to uh, get rid of them. But I guess, like, like Wanda said, if there's another principal willing to take a chance, I agree with that. I'll give them a second chance. Uh, they have a personality conflict. Like Wanda said. Uh, the first thing we need to do when it comes to hiring teachers, we need to have an HR, a true HR department. We have educators that are being moved out of the classroom from principalship or any other department and put into HR, so head of HR or teachers. I don't know that any of you could go into your place of business and be the HR person. It takes a special person because there's so many federal laws, state laws that they have to go by. We need a true professional HR. We do need to recruit. I'm glad we do have a recruiter. Um, we need to work hard on getting the best teachers coming in, working with the, the universities, local universities, um, that will bring some in. 
The other thing is how to retain the teachers. When teachers leave, they just turn in their notice. Some don't even do that. There is no explanation, no requirement to find out why they're leaving. That might help retain some. The other thing is when we hire new teachers, we need to have mentors that are in that school to work with those teachers. When I went to Red Bank, I was number 96 in seniority. When I left in 2010, I was number four. We had turnover, a huge turnover of teachers. We need to encourage some of our seasoned teachers to stay so that they can be mentors. When a new teacher comes in, there are things that we don't think of seasoned teachers until it happens. And so many times when a new teacher comes in, is put in the classroom and says, go to it. We've got to work with those, those new teachers. Discipline is a problem. And you can have 10 SROs in a school, that's not going to stop something from happening. It may deter it, it may put it off. But we do need to work on working with these students. Many of them come from a one parent household and that parent they may not see every day. So we've got to be there, we've got to offer things for them to, to help them to build respect. ROTC is, is a great opportunity to do that. No, it's not a recruitment for the military, but it does teach them respect. It teaches them um, structure. And that's what a lot of these students that come from these homes need. 